Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking to you today. My name is uh, Mike Wozniak, uh, also called uh, Ryszek. Some of you might know me already. Uh, I work um, in the Free and Open Source Software Foundation, which is a part of Open Education Coalition in, uh, in Poland. Um, I, also, I also was engaged with telecomics and the anti-ACTA movement in, in Poland. Uh, so lots of different, different things. I will be talking about, uh, to you about open education uh, resources in Poland. Uh, okay, so who knows what are open education resources? Show of hands. Okay, who likes shows of hands? Show of hands. <laughs> okay, apparently you're not sleeping. Uh, who knows what free software is? Very well. So, free software, four freedoms, I won't go into that. The same four freedoms should apply to uh, open education resources. Uh, the open education resources are resources, are media, are textbooks, are uh, documents, etc., etc., used in education that are open licensed. Usually it's CC BY or CC BY SA, those, uh, one of those, these two licenses. And they have to be technologically open. So they have to be available in open formats, obviously, right? We, don't, we cannot have technical uh, problems like DRM uh, with, with uh, open education resources. That would, that would um, kill, the, the whole, kill the whole point. Uh, and the thing is that, you know, this is a part of a bigger movement. Free and, free and open source software, open education resources, open access, uh, many, many other liberal culture, et cetera, et cetera. This is all part of a bigger Picture. So this is just one, one of the parts of, of a huge picture that most of us probably here are a part of somehow. Um, the thing is uh, that this makes a lot of sense in education. Education is, uh, uh, is sharing knowledge, right? You have to share knowledge. To, you ha to educate people, you share, uh, you share knowledge. And to share knowledge, you educate, you educate people. So being able to share the resources, being able uh, to you know, share the textbook, give the media to the, to the students, and let the students then remix, f uh, you know, have fun with it, uh, play with it like they would with the free software code, or like they would with Wikipedia article, or like they would with anything other open licensed, makes a lot of sense. Uh, in education. Uh, and the other thing is that such resources, as we know from the Wikipedia example, are easier to keep up to date, right? You make a textbook, to one, a textbook once, and then you just amend it, update it year by year. You don't have to make it all over again, right? And everybody can, can actually, uh, can actually uh, benefit from it. So, uh, e-textbooks in Poland. This is a tricky name. I don't like the name. I believe that the name should be open textbooks. That would make a lot more sense and that would make our job much easier. Because when we're sp speaking about e-textbooks, you know, electronic textbooks, people see tablets, people see, you know, electronic devices, people see, oh my god, I will have to have a computer or a device to actually read the textbooks. So this is not the whole idea. The main and the most important, uh, important part of the e-textbooks or open textbooks program in Poland is the, is the openness. It's the fact that they are going to be published on free and open, uh, free and open license. They are going to be published in free and, uh, and open source formats. Um, and uh, yes, uh, so this, right? Uh, this program is planned for, it's a, it's a pilot program. It's a pilot pro program. It's not uh, for all the grades yet. It's not for all the students yet. It's being uh, prepared for grades four to sixth, fourth to sixth of Polish, uh, Polish education uh, system. Uh, so it will be around 18 textbooks prepared for 11, about 11 million, uh, about 11 million uh, euros. Mm, and uh, this program, uh, this, this, is the, this is the boring part. So first some technicalities. This program requires, this is how it's built in Poland, requires four uh, higher education uh, institution partners to do the subject matter work, like you know, biology, math, whatever, and one technological partner to be responsible for the technological 
part of the program, like which formats actually to use, which technologies actually to use, etc., etc. But there are uh, important stipulations in the program. First of all, as I said, they have to be in open formats. Secondly, they have to be all textbooks that are prepared, that are going to be prepared, have to be available in print-ready version so that anybody could just go to a library, go to a school, go whatever, and print their own textbook. So they don't have to actually have the device, right? This is, this is crucial, as we will see uh, later. Uh, the, um, some statistics and some background information about Poland and about textbook situation in Poland so that we understand what we are talking about when we are talking uh, about, you know, publishers campaign against textbooks. Average monthly wage uh, in Poland is about 1,000 euros. Uh, minimal wage is about 280 euros. And in France, minimal wage is, just to you know, put it in, a pers in perspective, in France, the minimal wage is 1,200 euros per month. Okay, so these are the numbers that we're actually working at in Poland. And a set of textbooks for a single child uh, each year costs about 150 euros. That's more than half of minimal wage. I mean, that's a lot of money. Uh, and the whole market, uh, whole textbook market, is worth about around 250 million euros per year. This is how much money is pumped, uh, basically, to the to the textbook, uh, to textbook publishers. Uh, there's another important uh, important thing. Uh, the way the system works is that parents pay for textbooks for their children, but the, but they do not select the textbooks. Teachers select the textbooks. T uh, textbooks are not for, for a particular class or for a particular grade in, in a particular school. Textbooks are not being selected by the parents, are not being selected on the ministry level or wherever. They are selected by the teacher of this particular class. But the, because the teacher in Poland doesn't pay for the textbooks, obviously this gives the textbook publishers a lot of possibilities to influence the decision. So, workshops are being made for teachers to sh show them how good each textbook of each publisher is and why should they use this one instead of that one or whichever, right? Uh, and, and free textbooks and free materials are being uh, given to, to the teachers so that they know how to use certain publishers textbooks, right? This all influences the decision of, of, of the teachers and because the teachers do not pay for the textbook, they do not pay for their decision, they can choose whatever and the parents foot the bill anyway. Well, not only the parents, this is, this is, the, this is the kick. Because first of all, um, pu uh, textbook publishers can ask the Ministry of Education to subsidize their textbooks. And unfortunately, I couldn't find the numbers of you know, how much textbooks are actually being subsidized in Poland. I'm sorry for that, I couldn't find those. Uh, but, they, but, the, uh, but the government also subsidizes poor families. Uh, they have a special fund for poor, for poor families to buy textbooks for their children. And that's about 32 million euros each year. So this is the money. 32 million uh, euros each year goes directly to families to buy textbooks. So it goes basically directly to the textbook publishers, right? Uh, so this is... Uh this is the situation. Oh, and another thing. This is, this is actually uh, also quite important, that um, uh, second-hand market, right? Uh, student stops using the textbook, gives it to his younger sibling, or sells it. Well, not anymore. Because the textbooks are being bundled with exercise books, or are actually the same book as the exercise book. So you have a text, and then you have exercises in the same book. So once used, it's not actually resellable. It's not possible to resell. Obviously, you can ask kids to use pencils, but we all know how that works, right? When you give uh, a textbook to a, to a child and it, he, has, he or she has to uh, you know, write in it anyway, they will use a pen at some point. And this textbook will not be you know, second-handable. It, it will not be uh, possible to sell it on the second-hand market. And what's more, uh, I, would, um, I will use this word, actually, that uh, textbooks right now in Poland are, being are very, very flimsy. I mean, after a year or two, they are, they are falling apart. Right? This is not the case with textbooks like 20 or 30 years ago. I mean, I have such textbooks at my home, and I can still use them. They were, they were you know, solid books because they were meant to be used through 
generations right now. Obviously, this is not uh, business-wise for, uh, for, for, the, for the lobby. Uh, and there's another uh, interesting statistic. Between 2005 and 2011, the number of kids, of school kids in Poland, dropped from 5.5 million to, to uh, from, sorry, from 6.5 million to 5.5 million, about one, one sixth. But the value of the textbook market went up from 155 million euros to about 250 million euros. So about a half. How do they do that? I would love to you know, have a business model that would work like that. How do they do that? Uh, so obviously, textbook publishers do not like this idea. They do not like you know, this, right? Uh, so this is what they do. The whole campaign, the whole campaign uh, of textbook publishers is based on fear, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, with subject matter, as I will try. To, sh to show you, uh, first of all, what they use as an argument is cost. Oh my God, these textbooks will cost exorbitant you know, amounts of money to make. I mean, electronic textbooks, you know, all the equipment, all the gimmicks. Oh my God, this will be a lot of money. So basically they're saying something like that. I, I, I would love to talk with their you know, budgeting divisions if math works like that there. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it wouldn't, uh, because it usually works, you know, the other way around. But still, they use this, uh, they use this argument, and the, on the only thing we can do is just try to shoot it down everywhere it, sh uh, where, everywhere where it shows. And it's hard. Why it's hard? Because, you know, textbook publishers are publishers, so ha they have quite good contact with the media. And what we've noticed is that Polish media are actually publishing things, publishing articles, articles written by textbook publishers uh, or te textbook publisher PR uh, companies, word for word. Interesting. Uh, the second argument, uh, equipment, right? This already showed before, and this, uh, I told you that this will be important. Uh, you will have to have, the argument goes, oh, well, you will have to have all those iPads, tablets, expensive you know, gimmicks to actually be able to use the, the, the textbooks. The textbooks may be free, but you will have to pay like you know, 200 or 300 euros for a device. Uh, well, obviously we already know that uh, this is bullshit because, you know, the, as I said, and I have to reiterate that at every meeting or at every, you know, uh, media outlet I talk with about this program, this program is not about equipment. This has nothing to do with equipment, right? This is about, uh, this is about openness, this is about uh, uh, li library licensing, uh, and every single textbook will have a print-ready version that actually the textbook publishers could print and sell. Why won't they actually use this business model? It could work, right? Pe people would actually probably buy, um, buy such textbooks. And there's, uh, there's another interesting uh, argument connected with, with the equipment, is that, um, and I quote, you will not have a second-hand market for tablets. <laughs> uh, so, you know, between... between uh, them trying to kill off the second-hand market in textbooks and the second-hand market in tablets that is actually picking up steam in Poland, I have no idea, you know, how they are able to actually sell this, uh, but, but they're trying to, and, well, you know, this is our reaction, but I hope I, it's not only me. Uh, another, another argument is quality. You know, only the professional publishing companies can assure the quality of the work that, that children will use. I mean, the first thing you have to think about, you know, when you think about education is quality. I mean, for God's sake, think of the children. Think of the children. Um, so the first thing is that, you know, judging by the quality of their arguments, I'm not very, you know, convinced that this is actually the case. Uh, and judging by the quality of textbooks that fall apart after one or two years, I'm actually convinced otherwise, but what do I know? Um, but um, 
you know, there's, uh, this, is, uh, this is actually for another information that, uh, that I want to you know, tell you. It's that, uh, oh right, first, first of all, if they're thinking about quality, you know, releasing their textbooks as open education resources and helping others improve them would probably improve the quality. But for some reason, they will not do that. I mean, I can bet they will not release their textbooks as open education resources, even though it would improve their quality. So apparently quality isn't exactly the, you know, the most important thing they're thinking of when they're creating the textbook for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, I have been to a meeting uh, where there were government officials from the two ministries involved. The two ministries involved are the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of uh, Administration and Digital Affairs. Uh, there were the, the publisher lobby, six, uh, six or seven very sad people uh, that were trying to convince us that you know the internet is is, is a bad thing, etc. And there were there were the, the NGOs you know from the coalition of of, uh, of open education. And uh, when they got the news uh, on this meeting that you know the government has 11 mi around 11 million euros for you know creating 18 textbooks. They took out their you know, calculators and, uh, okay, that's about 600,000 euros per single textbook. This will not even be enough to clear the copyrights on you know, graphics used in the textbooks. And we were, trying to, we were actually going to say something, but to our surprise, somebody from the government said something. And they said, okay, why don't you use you know, open education resources, like you know, photos on the CC BY license or whatever, to illustrate your point, you know, Wikimedia Commons? 15 million, <laughs> why? And, and, and their, their reaction was actually what, you know, what, why this is here. Uh, their reaction was, okay, uh, one of the people said, okay, I'm a representative for, for one of the biggest textbook publishers in Poland, and we do not use open education resources. This, this should tell you something. <laughs> well. We all agreed. We all agreed that this tells us something. Probably not exactly. This is the very same thing that he had in mind. But still, you know, fun, fun, fun. Uh, this is another one. This is this is actually uh, quite funny uh, because they are. Uh, you know, the publishers are claiming this is an unfair business practice, right? I, I mean, we have our market. It's worth. 250 million euros, and the government is trying to, you know, destroy the market. How can you, why, I mean, this is an unfair business practice, and uh, it goes further. It goes not only to the government, it goes to the institutions. This is what I, why I said that this is, you know, the, the boring part was important. As I said, there had to, there has, there had to be four uh, higher uh, education institutions to be part of the programs, for the, pro for the program to actually start. So they sent a legal threat. <laughs> they sent a legal threat to every single university in Poland, saying that taking part in a government-funded, government-mandated um, education program will be an unfair business practice, and they will sue them. That was fun. That was fun. We actually got this. Uh, we got. We actually. I can show uh, show it to you because we actually got this um, this letter from uh, the. I think it was the, the yes, the Wrocław University uh, from the bureau of the dean with with the note that I mean this is some bullshit. And if you can, could you do a you know legal analysis of that and publish it because you know we don't care about that. But maybe some you know somebody might not know that this is actually bullshit. Uh, so. There is a legal uh, analysis in Polish uh, of this whole. Obviously, it's a lot longer. Um, unfortunately, it's in, in Polish, so I'll not go through that. Basically, as I said, it's bullshit. Um, another, uh, but you know, the important part, the important part in, in this part is that uh, you have to be on the you know subject matter. If you're fighting for uh, open education resources, you have to be ready also to talk to lawyers. You have to be ready also for completely absurd ideas and completely absurd situations because if we didn't have the lawyers you know to contact and to say listen we got this we know this is bullshit but we have to show it to other universities because otherwise this program will, uh, will not fly we wouldn't be, you know the, the program would not fly because you know other universities would probably say um yeah it's probably bullshit but i don't know if you want to go into that because you know courts will take like five years to clear this up uh, Another argument, it's, it's related to the previous one, market destruction. You are destroying the market. You know, people will lose their jobs, and not only people 
in you know working for the textbook publishers themselves, the whole book market will collapse because the textbook um, textbook market is about 20% of book market of the whole book market in Poland. So book market will collapse, the libraries will close, uh, you know, think of the paper mills, I mean <laughs> paper mills. Uh, I, I don't even know where to start with this one. Uh, it's basically a uh, standard wind, uh, broken window policy. Who has heard about broken window policy? Okay, so broken window policy goes like that. J Jack broke a window with his ball, but that's a good thing because the window maker gets to make money by fixing the window. And then he gets the money and you know, puts it in, in the economy, buying some food or whatever. So the money works in the economy. So you know, breaking the window is a good thing. Maybe we should break more, wait. <laughs> That's, uh, it doesn't work like that. I mean, uh, the assumption here is that hadn't Jack broken the window, the money would be put in a, ma in a mattress and just you know, rot there. And this is not the case. Obviously, the money would be used to something else. The economy would get the money anyway. It would be just, you know, redirected to something else, probably more, me more needed by, the Jack's, by, by Jack's family. So this is why it's, uh, yeah. Uh, I think this should be the, re the default reaction to this argument by anybody, right? We really do care. I mean, we are very sorry for your dying business models. I mean, we should think, you know, I, we are very sorry that we couldn't have done anything to save the horse and buggy industry. But right now we have the chance. I mean, every, everybody in this, in this room has the chance to save some industry. We should close down Wikipedia. It's killing the you know, printed encyclopedia uh, uh, industry. We should kill, kill off uh, Creative Commons because it's killing the music industry along with you know, piracy or whatever. And we should kill off you know, free software, obviously, right? I mean, think of the, think of the, think of the industry. Um, uh, yeah, right, so uh, when they go when they finally you know, get over the broken window fallacy and they see that the money will actually get redirected somewhere else, they are offering you know, the idea where this money will be redirected and this is you know, the IT industry. The bad, bad IT industry will reap the profits of this e-textbook uh, program because you know, the, the, the huge companies will get into schools and get government subsidies to, to, to do uh, things we, I mean, nobody actually knows what they are saying that those companies will do because this program isn't about equipment to reiterate again <laughs> so you know it always gets back it always it always gets back to the equipment and this is why uh, i don't like this e textbook part right this is this is exactly the this is exactly the um the problem uh, although although i really like the uh, uh, the idea that you know First they use the argument, oh my god, this will kill our industry, you're you know, killing our profits. And then they use the argument, this industry shouldn't get the profits. Uh, what, how, how does that work in your head? I mean, how can you make this argument and then make the same argument, you know? And I really like the idea that I'm a, you know, IT industry lobbyist. Basically, I've been called an IT industry lobbyist, you know, the big, you know, Microsoft, Google, whatever. Um, I work in a small... NGO, uh, and on each and every meeting with the government about the open education resources that we've been asked to come, it was like NGOs for and uh, textbook publishers against. So, okay, I IT industry, that's very nice. Uh, centralized education system, and I will go f faster because I can see that we're slowly finishing. Uh, you know, this is, this is the argument. You, the Soviet Union is, is back here again. Right? The, the government will centralize the education because they have now the pro program to do their, you know, their bidding in the textbook area. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, very, that's very interesting, but you know, you had to clear your textbooks with the Ministry of Education for the last 20 years. Anyway, so, like, if they wanted to centralize something, I think they would already. Um, and this is, this is actually the most interesting one and I have to actually look at the notes to you know try to uh, try to do it right uh, so basically apparently we're we are a book culture we're a culture that reads books and this is the you know this is the main thing apparently and if you know book reading dies and because people are spending more and more time in front of computers they are not reading books so the book culture is dying our whole culture is dying the culture will die 
think of the culture. Um, <laughs> It, it's fun. I mean, it's 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 fun. It, it would be fun. It would be a lot of fun uh, if it wasn't so sad. Um, if it wasn't so sad that the, these arguments are actually printed in printed media. They are actually used in radio programs, etc. Uh, and you know, thing is that it could have been different. The uh, the textbook publishers could you know say, hmm, this is actually an opportunity. You know, we can uh, we have we can get government money to actually you know, modernize our business model that is dying. We could you know, get on with the program, we could help them print the textbooks, you know, the printed versions. We could actually get the CC BY license because the, um, the textbooks in Poland will be licensed on a Creative Commons BY attribution license. So they can actually take them and close down the, the, the you know, do something with the, with the materials and close them down and sell them. So they could actually take the textbooks, for, for example, prepare them for profiled schools that don't need, for example, this much biology, but they need some more math, math or whatever, and they could you know, do business on that. And this would be with the benefit for them and for everybody. But for some reason, they decided to, uh, they decided to fight. Um, and, uh, and I believe this is not the best uh, strategy for them, and I believe this is very sad for all of us because, you know, this binds resources that could have been used, um, could have been used otherwise. Uh, because we're fighting back, uh, first of all, we're working together. The, the Open Education Coalition is an is a, um, open coalition of, of NGOs. It, it, has like, it has 17 members right now, 17 members right now. So this amplifies our voice. When we go somewhere and we say, um, you know, it should be CC BY license and it should be, you know, published with open standards. Uh, it's not one uh, organization saying that, it's 17 organizations saying that. And because there are different organizations there, we have Wikimedia uh, Foundation Poland, we have OpenStreetMap Poland, we have the Free and Open Source Software Foundation, and we have the Modern Poland Foundation. Every and many, many others doing different stuff. So we have experts from many, many different areas. So when we have an argument that is technical, somebody can do it and you know, try to answer it. And if we have a you know, lawyery argument, if, if we have a legal threat, we also have an organization to go to and ask, ask for help. Uh, then we, we're sending the info out. We're doing talks like that. We're meeting with teachers. We're meeting with the politicians. We're meeting with, uh, with people and telling them, listen, this is not about equipment. You will not have to buy Adam an iPad, really. Uh, we're talking to the media. Uh, and all the, all the time, we are trying to keep the pressure on politicians and let them know that there is support of this particular program. We've made a special petition website that is gathering you know, uh, signatures of people that are supporting, uh, supporting open, oops, uh, open education. Uh, and at the same time, we're watching closely what, closely what the government does. Because you know, governments have this uh, uh, thing that they often just start to listen to lobbyists at some point, and they just change something, right? So, uh, I think this is this is the strategy that uh, that uh, that we're using, and it for now it works. We'll see about what what else. Uh, if you need some more resources, because okay, we're yeah, we don't have much time. Uh, all of these are uh, the the presentation should be available in the uh, you know on the 29C3 website somewhere probably. Uh, and thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much. Um, if you have questions, you can line up at the microphones here. And uh, we have also questions from the internet. Can the signal angel start with the first question of five, I think? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, no, one question, actually. Okay. Uh, the internet was quite uh, amazed about the, the mouse cursor, by the way. But uh, the question is, um, where do we contact you if we want to learn more about your work? Uh, again, where where do we contact you if we want to learn more about your work? <laughs> Here. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Then first question from here. Hello, greetings from Finland. I'm a mathematics teacher and a student. And first of all, congratulations for your ridiculous situation. I've been laughing a lot at the, Pol <laughs> the Polish publishers now. Uh, the situation in Finland is so that uh, it's not as dire as you have 
I've, I've been seriously amazed that people and media and publishers are even reacting at all to open, open, well, openly licensed materials. This is a totally new thing in Finland. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, what we just did is that we had a few mathematics teachers who were completely fed up in the curriculum and the book publishing system, yeah. and we had a marathon where we wrote a math textbook in a weekend. Mm -hmm. yeah. Creative Commons Attribution. Okay. And then we did it again. <laughs> and then, and in the first time we set up an organization, Open Learning Materials Association. And now we've had donations. We now have free maths materials for grades seven to nine, completely free and open to use for everyone. Also for, <laughs> also for programming. <coughs> and this is getting bigger and bigger. And I have to say, we're pretty early on this because the, pub because the publishing business hasn't reacted, except when we first made a press release, they, they asked several times, but how do they make their living? Yeah. Because they're still not at the point of, but how do we make the, our living yeah. when they, Probably. oh shit. So what I, what I really want to ask, including that, how we can contact you, is how you can um, sort of help us and other people who are not in the same situation as in Poland yet. So we can actually avoid this problem. Because we don't have a government who is uh, supporting these open materials yet. They don't know about <coughs> it. But I will probably try to have a lightning talk about the situation later on. Uh -huh. <laughs> well played. Uh, we should contact, you know, after the, after the talk. Uh, I don't know how we can help as, you know, us. I don't think that the situation in Poland is dire. I think it's actually not bad because the government is supporting and, the, you know, the program is running. We only have to fight the ridiculous, you know, publisher's lobby. Uh, um, so, so it's not that bad. And I think the best thing we can do is fight them and show that this works so that other countries could see, okay, so they have it in Poland, so why don't we have it yet, right? And if, you know, the publishers start doing their tricks, it's like, yeah, I mean, this is the argument used in Poland like five years ago. And, you know, look at this presentation, especially the lady with the leg in the swimming pool, you know. And, you know, this is, I, I think this is the best, we can, the best we can do. And cooperate, cooperate because, you know, when we have a lot of organizations doing things together, it's harder for the government to ignore them and it's harder for the media to just say, oh, it's, you know, just some hackers, geeks, okay, whatever. Okay, so we'll stay in touch. Yeah, thank you. Right, thank you very much and congratulations to Finland. <coughs> okay, next question from over here. I think you're involved with the EduCamp in spring next year, aren't you? Uh, yes, it is in Hamburg and on April 12 to 14. Um, mom, wait, it's gone. Uh, 12 to 14th, probably. If this is a weekend, it's uh, in Hamburg. Just Google EduCamp and you'll find us. Uh, my question is about the op Open Education uh, Coalition. You mm -hmm. talked about the organizations that are members there. I wonder if there were any members from the core of the schools, like teacher organizations or something. Yes, there are, uh, there are organizations that are, uh, you know, uh, an association of libraries, for example. There, is a, there, there are universities. Uh, or university-based uh, organizations, and there's something, sorry, something called uh, um, Center for Education um, for for uh, Civic Education, Center for Civic Education, that actually does uh, courses for teachers. So uh, we don't, I don't think we have uh, an organization that is, you know, purely teachers-based. But there are organizations that you know cater to teachers and are working very closely because uh, you know the Center for Civic Education works very closely with the Ministry of Education. So um, it's it's happening. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And let's go over here. Uh, I have two questions, and uh, the first one is, how did this happen? And also, uh, what happened that you actually have a program that says you have to have open uh, textbooks? How did that start? Because uh, where I live, uh, this would be unthinkable. Uh, it's a lot of work by a lot of people, P partly, be, uh, partly work of, of the coalition of uh, open education, uh, partly work of the members of the coalition before the coalition was created. It was a few years ago. Uh, there were, you know, there's a, there's a government that actually knows how to listen. They don't, they don't know much about technology, they don't know much, you know, they're politicians. They don't know much about, uh, you know, technical stuff. But they have the ability and understanding 
uh, that they should listen and try to understand things when people are saying something to them. And they are actually listening and they can actually make their own arguments against, you know, uh, dumb arguments from whichever side they come. Uh, and this is also connected a little bit with anti-ACTA because, you know, during anti-ACTA also the Coalition of edu Open Education was involved in anti-ACTA uh, and was part of the whole, you know, NGO uh, informal coalition that was fighting anti-ACTA. So we also got, you know, some head start, let's, let's call it a little bit, with ACTA. But it was, it was prepared by long, long walk and long, long work by people and organizations before, working on different levels and, 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 a, little bit, and a little bit of luck. So it's, it's not really easy to go through the you know, exact process. We didn't have like, you know, a plan that we realized. It was like, this happened, this happened, reacted. Look, we have a program. And now we have to you know, try to keep it alive, basically. OK, and uh, another question. Is there, so you said that all the publishers are against this. Uh, isn't there a publisher, can you do something like divide and conquer? Isn't there a publisher you can pull on your side that can uh, actually <coughs> profit from doing this? Uh, we're trying to do that, but it's not easy because um, when you look at the legal threat somewhere, oh yeah, here it is, uh, I write to you on behalf of my, you know, um, something or other, and the list is all the major publishers, all the major textbook publishers in Poland. So, uh, so they are already, you know, they got ganged up and they are already, you know, fighting tooth and nail against this. And, you know, the, the mind frame, the mind frame of the person that said uh, that we're not using open education resources and this should tell you something. Well, the mind frame should, should tell you something. I mean, this is the mind frame in the, in the publisher's lobby. And it's not really easy to reach out to them and, you know, work with them because they, they don't want to work with, you know, open education and, and liberal licensing. Is, we're trying to do that. This would be the best solution, as I said. It's very sad that they are not on the, in the program. But this is their choice, and, and we cannot really do much about it. Thank you. Thank you. For example, in Germany, I'm a teacher at a German vocational school, and now they're sending out uh, commercial or uh, advertisements to teachers for print-on-demand textbooks. So they want to get... Basically, they're put in the market, but let's see how far they get. Okay, there's another question from the lady over there. Mm -hmm. um, you were saying in your strategy that you talk to teachers, and I was just wondering if you actually do professor, uh, professional development workshops <coughs> on openness. Yes, we okay. do. I, this is something I didn't say, sorry. Uh, we do uh, trainings from, you know, on, on openness. We do trainings on Creative Commons licensing. We do uh, trainings. Actually, the trainings that the coalition does are based on copyright law. They start from copyright law in Poland, which is very interesting. I won't Could get into that. Could you guys just talk a little bit lighter over here? Thank you. And, and uh, uh, so we do workshops like that. We start from the copyright law. We show, we show, we show how, uh, you know, copyright, how the copyright law we have in Poland isn't really working in this, uh, you know, in the education area, even though we have educational, you know, like you can use it for education, whatever, but what does it mean actually? Uh, and then we show the teacher, and the teacher's like, yeah, okay, yeah, we know this problem, we cannot share this or that. Yeah, well, you can use open education resources. What are those? Oh, here we go. So we do trainings like that, yes, they're usually whole day or two day trainings. Okay, thank you. thank you. And last question from over here, please. Uh, yes, th thank you very much for this very interesting presentation thank you. that you had. Um, I have a question because you mentioned that you face problems from, um, uh, from the sides of publishers, but do you also expect or you, you have also uh, problems from the sides of collecting societies uh, in Poland, <coughs> which are, for example, demanding that you stop using uh, like creative common licenses, uh, etc., <coughs> because of something that is uh, that you mentioned under copyright law. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, this is interesting because you know, as I said, open education resources are part of a bigger picture, and you know, they fit into this bigger picture. Obviously, copyright is is one of the huge problems in this bigger picture. But we are uh, we are trying to handle collection societies. Collection societies are not interested in open education resources. They're not in this discussion at all. They do not do anything here uh, directly because the law may, makes them you know get some money from white pieces of paper. But this is not exactly lobbying, right? Uh, so they're not in this discussion, but they are in the copyright reform or, you know, uh, discussion. The interesting thing is that in Poland, since two or three years, something like that, uh, there was a court order saying 
um, you know what collection agencies? You cannot do anything about Creative Commons. So you know, uh, sorry, you have to you know you have to live with that. And the collection agencies since then actually started embracing Creative Commons a bit, just just a bit, so that you know courts cannot do anything bad to them. Uh, and we can see some. Uh, we don't see anything you know warm and good happening with the publishers, but we see some good you know signs from the collection agencies, and there is some work being done there. But it's not in the area of, of open educational resources. It's in the area of music, films, etc. Okay, well, thank you very much. I think thank you. if uh, you still have questions, Michael will be around here. Yeah. I'll be here till the end of the Congress. So.